Now, Mick Fealty, the editor of Slugger O'Toole, what a wondrous name for a magazine, is on the line now. Because, actually, as I think we have just demonstrated, the north of Ireland, six small counties, which should never have been in Britain in the first place, is actually ruling Britain. Ian Paisley is running Britain and nine of his friends. I'm just wondering, Mick, if you think that in the long term uh, that has any uh, prospect of persuading the British people that it's time we were, sh- we were short of it. What do you think? <laughs> We've been asking ourselves that question for about 800 years, um, George, and I don't think that one's going to get answered anytime soon. Um, the DUP just two years ago had uh, a disastrous election in the very last assembly election we were to have. Um, uh, as I call it, the election to nowhere, because shortly afterwards, the whole thing collapsed. Uh, and in Northern Ireland, we haven't had a democracy for nearly two years. And guess what? Nobody's noticed. Um, so, but but that, that, whilst that was a disaster for, uh, for Arlene Foster in particular, um, they came back shortly afterwards and increased their, their, their voting, voter percentage by something like um, 10% in the June 2017 election. And of course, by pure fluke and by accident, they've now ended up in the box seat. And as you say, they're pretty much, look, if the DUP MPs hadn't voted, if they'd sat on their hands, the government would still have won. But it would have won by one seat only. Uh, and I think they are... Um, no, they would have lost. They would have lost, Mick. They, they won by nineteen. So, if ten of her votes had voted the other way, that's a transfer corrected. of I twenty. She, she'd have been but, out. You know, the, she'd have been out the, the, if, if the DUP had voted for the motion. Absolutely. So they've got a kind of a complete uh, numerical and emotional whip hand over pretty much everybody, um, which is an extraordinary turn of events. No, no one had seen it before, but then no one saw Trump coming, no one saw Brexit coming, except the hardcore Brexiteers themselves. We are living in a world where um, predictability and I think political maturity and leadership is in very short supply. Well, and if you're looking but, to the DUP to provide that, well, when, yeah. you, when you look towards Northern Ireland, what, what, you, what you see is a, is a culture um, between the DUP and Sinn Féin, which, which is kind of, it's, it's a culture of um, uh, low expectation uh, of eternal political standoffs and endless forms of negotiation. It's not about government. It's not about doing things. It's about taking a stand, um, putting a line in the sand, and then uh, and then, and then collapse after collapse after collapse. Don't you think, uh, though, I, I, I mean, in any normal polity, I'll grant you this is hardly a normal polity, but in a normal polity, people would say, right, there's a group of 10 people. They are effectively now ruling the whole of what they call the United Kingdom. So let's take a closer look at them. And if you took a closer look at them, if you took a closer look at their relationships, uh on the subject of terrorism, as Theresa May and Michael Gove were doing just this week. If you took a look at them in relation to the scandal that brought down the Northern Ireland Assembly, uh, if you took a look at them in their attitude to gay people, uh, to women's rights, to uh, minority ethnic communities, immigrants, if you took a look at them in their relationship to Roman Catholics, you'd say, well, do I really want to be governed by 10 such people, wouldn't they? Well, as soon as you look at them, George, you look around at your own uh, party colleagues on the government benches, and you go, um, I mean, there are a lot of strange people there, but naturally speaking, and this is the odd thing about the Conservative Party, normally um, they, they will bury their differences over almost anything. The problem is that they can't afford to look at any ally too closely because without them, um, they have absolutely nothing or they face a general election. And, well, Mrs May's numbers are holding up okay, but they seem to be holding up okay last time. 
And, and so you're just simply stuck in a situation. Now, what's really interesting about the, this is that almost every country in Europe doesn't have this confrontational two-party uh, system, but, but through proportional representation, coalitions are commonplace. And that means that often, although a small party like the DUP um, would have a lot of power because they make up the numbers, they're also often what we call, they're all, also the people who generally kind of take the damage of any of the difficult decisions that a government has to make. Yes. But because of the culture war in Northern Ireland, the DUP, where, where people are used to, people are used to the government not working for two years. Do they really care if the UK government doesn't work for another two years? Absolutely not, as long as the other lot don't get in. And there are an awful lot of people in Northern Ireland who are gay, lesbian, uh, bisexual, who nevertheless, under the pressure of the culture war, and by culture war I mean in the Northern Ireland sense of Catholic versus Protestant, they'll actually turn out and vote for people in the DUP who refuse to uh, grant things like marriage equality. That is how uh, through other and backward it is. Just this morning, the Irish News reported, uh, now, uh, Ian Paisley, who's already been in trouble with uh, Parliament once, charged a, a, an Irish charity running a fundraising uh, uh, seminar in New York City, £6,000, 1000 roughly for accommodation while he was there, and, and 5000 to travel first class. When the, when the foreign minister from the Republic um, uh, uh, took, took a plane that cost him about 260. Will that get him the sack? Well, it would in Scotland. It certainly would in England. Um, he'd certainly be asked to, to, to run a gauntlet. Will it in Northern Ireland? Absolutely not. So these guys come in fireproofed by, by, by the conflict by the so-called peace process... Uh, by the way, by the way, Mick, uh, if you invited me to speak in New York, you'd need to fly me first class too. I well, wouldn't, indeed, I wouldn't I fly know. economy to New York. <laughs> if you want me, you'll need to pay for me to go in comfort. So <laughs> I'm not going to slam him. I'm, yeah, not sl- I'm not going to slam him on that. Well, I'll tell you what, it's not, Galloway, it wasn't a public meeting. Ta- uh, that is the first time I... I well, I never expected this, to hear you of all oh, people well, uh, to the rescue look, look, no, of nothing, family. No, nothing's too good for the workers, Mick. Uh, <laughs> if you want me to go and speak at a conference in New York, you'll need to, you'll need to provide me business class. Now, he's, uh, ho- uh, he's holidaying the... Uh, Seychelles is another matter. And he did get away with that because they had, uh, didn't they, a recall petition. uh, Yeah, yeah, they just uh, missed the 10% they needed. Yeah, well, I mean, I was a bit surprised, were you not? That they they missed the 10? I mean, the only thing that surprised me is they got so close to the 10%. But you know how ridiculous it is it to have a, a recall vote where you can you can't even get ten percent of people to come out and vote for you. There is absolutely no possible. Even if they got to the recall, they, those people in North Antrim were never ever in a month of Sundays going to give up uh, Ian Paisley, no matter what they might think about him privately. Um, many of them be very uh, you know strict free Presbyterians will take a very dim view of this. Uh, princess in the P attitude that he seems to have um, uh, about travel. Um, it, it, these are hard-working, grafting uh, rural folk uh, who, who who are abstemious in in all kinds of ways. But when it comes down to if it's them and trying to, as we we say in, in, in Belfast, if it's them and trying to take one of ours down, absolutely not. So what about the working in, class in uh, Antrim's one thing, the working class in East Belfast, blue collar people uh, that are suffering from effectively wage freezes, public expenditure cuts, uh, uh, education system problems and so on. They can't in their hearts be uh, all that happy about their representatives keeping the conservatives in power, are they? No, I don't think they are. And it's interesting um, it's interesting, John McDonnell, I thought, right from the very beginning, treated this. I mean, he must have had contacts with the unions because he warned the DUP when they, were con- when they first announced that they were going in with the government that many of their voters would not take kindly to it. But here's the thing. 
There's the one, the famous one billion quid, which still hasn't been paid out in full because we don't have a government to disperse the, fun, the funds. But if you take something like the universal credit rollout, which is slowly crunching uh, people on on the really on the bottom end, not simply the bottom end of society, but the bottom end of the workers, and I mean people who are going out in low wages, so low wages they have to be subsidised by the state. That's crunching people in Glasgow. It's 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 crunching people in Gloucestershire. It's crunching people all, slowly but surely. It's being rolled out all over Britain. Where is it not being rolled out until two thousand and twenty? Belfast, Northern Ireland. What a very interesting, uh, only, a very interesting is, point. Unfortunately, to end on Mick Fealty uh, of uh, Slugger O'Teal. He's the editor of Slugger O'Toole, which sounds like a magazine we need to all look up.